the standard treatment, um, or I should say management for this condition, um, is, is very different than we hope what treatment will be. So uh, currently we, we manage the condition and the manifestations by treating the symptoms of, if you will, heart failure. Um, we encourage patients to um, stay physically active, um, avoid smoking. We encourage patients to um, adhere to a relatively low sodium diet, assuming they have a clinical syndrome of heart failure, which means they're swollen and full of water. Um, we also encourage self-management skills, which is to weigh yourself on a daily basis because um, when you have some dietary indiscretion, eat a little extra salt, you can gain a lot of fluid pretty quickly, and that can really exacerbate your baseline symptoms, make you much shorter breath. So those are kind of the management strategies. None of those strategies, unfortunately, are treating the underlying condition. Um, we've learned a great deal about this particular disease. We've learned that this protein, transthyridin, which is a small protein, 127 amino acids, uh, fits together with three identical transthyretin proteins to form like a four-leaf like clover. And the disease is mediated by the fact that um, the, when the protein falls apart or misfolds, the pieces get stuck in the heart. So there are actually um, three emerging treatment strategies. Um, the first um, for cardiac amyloid is what's called transthyretin stabilization. These are small oral drugs that uh, fit in between the leaves of the protein and actually keep the protein together, so-called stabilizing it. The theory being that if the protein does not fall apart, you will slow down the progression or ideally, hopefully, even maybe halt the progression of the disease. Um, and there are several compounds that have been um, investigated in this area, one called diflunosol, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agent that's available by prescription. And then more recently, there's a drug called Tefamidus, which um, recently reported in a large phase three trial um, that they met their primary endpoint, which means the drug was reportedly successful and we're anxious to learn more. So that's one of the first standard therapies that will come for transthyretin cardiac amyloidosis. The second strategy is what's called silencing, in which um, drugs usually administered by intravenous or by a subcutaneous underneath the skin injection can actually amazingly go to the liver, go to the liver cells and tell them, shh, don't make the protein anymore. Con continue to do everything else you do, but silence that uh, production of that particular protein. And these aren't kind of pie in the sky ideas. These drugs exist. Um, they've been tested. They've mainly been tested in patients who have um, mutations in the transthyretin gene that causes a neuropathy, problems in the nerves, not a cardiomyopathy, but they have been shown in recently conducted what we call phase three trials. These are trials prior to registration with the Food and Drug Administration to be very effective. And so we have a lot of hope for those agents to be applied to patients with uh, transthyretin cardiomyopathy. And then the final emerging idea at this point, which is really early in its infancy, is the idea of using what we would call monoclonal antibodies to target the amyloid that already exists inside the heart and try to activate the immune system and allow it, if you will, like Pac-Man, to chew up and eliminate the amyloid that already exists. So those are the three strategies that are currently in development for the treatment of the problem.